Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to model a traffic signal structure using the SAFI HSE application. The SAFI HSE software is a leading structural engineering software for the generation, analysis, and design of various sign structures. The software accounts for the advanced structural analysis and design of steel and aluminum latticed highway sign structures, overhead sign structures, gantry structures, cantilevers, traffic signals, and luminaire support structures according to the latest American and Canadian standards such as CSA S6-06, CSA S6-14, Ashto LTS-13 ASD for steel, and Ashto LTS-15 LRFD for steel and aluminum. We are going to present in this video a full example of a traffic signal structure. This will include how to create the structure with all of its details. We will also assign all the required loads, the design parameters, and run the analysis and design. At the end of this model, we'll be looking at all the analysis and design results for this structure analyzed with the Ashto LTS LRFD code. Let's start the model. I'll open the general option command to select the 3D model to make sure the loads can be applied in all X and Z directions. Now, let's see the units. The current units are already set to imperial units. In addition, let's set the stress units to be in KSI. Let's open the highway sign wizard and define the required parameters for this structure. We will then select the steel material type and will select the Ashto LTS LRFD design code. And since the structure we will create is not in the list of predefined models, we will select the option manually made model. We will define the maximum threshold stress range for the fatigue for members away from any connection detail. Notice that for a manually made model like this one, you will specifically need to assign the fatigue parameters for each of the connection details. To create the model in an efficient way, we are going to use the grid command. There are also many other alternatives to create the geometry. Instead of the existing displayed grid, we will change it to a grid that fits our model. To create it faster for this video, we will paste the data for the axes along X directly from the Windows clipboard. We'll also fill the vertical axes using the same approach. Again, we will paste the data from the clipboard to create the model faster. By clicking OK, we should now be able to see the new added grid on the screen. Let's now add the members of the main pole. And we will also add the mast arm members. And now we'll select two members of the main pole. These two members should be set as one physical member. It is important to do this because we will assign a continuous tapered section to this column. Now let's assign this section to the current selection. We will assign section number six. This section is a variable section. The list of required sections for this model have been created before we began this video. Let's have a quick overview of the current section properties. So, the section called variable pole is a variable inertia section. The left here represents the bottom of the column with a diameter of 15 inches. And at the right represents the top of the column where we get a diameter of 11 inches. Let's now go ahead and close the window. The section will now be applied to the current selection. Let's also assign the appropriate section for the included portion of the arm. The section will now be applied to the current selection. Let's also assign the appropriate section for the inclined portion of the arm. Section number five, which is also a variable inertia member. The horizontal part of the arm will also have a variable inertia section assigned to it. Let's have a look at the model using a solid view. Remember, 
that a variable inertia section has been assigned to the column. To get a more accurate analysis and design result for the variable inertia sections, we need to subdivide these members into many parts. Let's subdivide this member in 10 divisions. We can now observe the variable inertia along the member. We will also divide these two other members in many divisions. The horizontal part of the arm is already divided, so the variable inertia is already accurate for those members. Keep in mind that this part should also be defined as a physical member. Let's now assign the support conditions. The joint at the base should have a fixed support condition. We are now ready to add the sign and the signal panels to the arm. To add a first panel, we'll activate the Create a Panel command. Then, we click on the reference joint of this panel. The name of the panel will be Sign 1. It is a simple panel. The offset along X and Y are the distance between the reference joint and the bottom left corner of the panel. Their values are minus 15 inches along X and minus 18 inches along Y. The width is equal to 30 inches and the height is equal to 36 inches. The thickness is 0.6 inches and the self weight is equal to 2 pounds per square foot. We would usually add all the other sign and signal panels the same way, but to save time for this video, we will use the table from the panel list. We will paste all the other sign and signal panels directly from the window clipboard. Then, we can leave the window by clicking OK. Now the structure geometry is completed. The next step is to now assign the loads using the load wizard. We'll get the wind speed from the US map available here. The location of this structure is the Illinois state and more precisely in the Cook County. We'll select a wind recurrence of 700 years. Let's now adjust the other load input. We'll set the ice thickness to a value of 0.75 inches and the associated wind on ice velocity is set to 40 miles per hour. These values are coming from the ASCE 7-10 code. From the help, we can see an overview that figure 10.2 which shows the ice thickness with its associated wind speed. Let's now fill the required information for the fatigue loads. The yearly mean wind velocity is higher than 11.2 miles per hour, so we'll need to specify it. We are also activating all the fatigue loads for this structure, including galloping, natural wind gust, and truck induced gusts. The traffic speed passing under the mast arm is 45 miles per hour, and its transverse location, according to the structure coordinates, is between 36 inches and 495 inches. This warning is reminding us that the fatigue at the connections need to be manually edited since we did not create this model manually. So, we'll have to specify the maximum threshold stress range for the specific welded connections. For example, the arm pole connection of the welded base plate connection. When we did use the highway sign load wizard command, all the loads have been generated. Let's quickly review all the applied loads. Here is the self weight, then the wind along Z and along X. Also, all the fatigue load cases, including the galloping, natural wind gust, and truck induced gust loads. If someone wants to make a detailed review of the applied loads, 
you can use the member win loads command which will display the detailed information on the applied loads of each of the members. For example, you can get a total force on each member. You can also review the applied ice loads on each of the members. The loads on the sign and signal panels can also be verified. For example, you can see the self-weight, the wind loads, and all the other loads on the panels. To get the steel design done correctly, we will have to make sure the unbraced length for bending and compression are correctly defined. For this example, to make it safe and simple, we will select all members and assign similar parameters using the member attributes command. In the software, the default unbraced length is the member length or the distance between each of the member joints. To have a more representative value in this model, we will select the unbraced length equal to the physical member length, both for bending and compression. The K values can also be edited if required. For the pole, the physical member lengths corresponds to the distance from the base to the tip of the pole. The fatigue verification requires additional input. Let's first concentrate on the welded connection at the base of the pole. Let's then edit only the first end of the member at the base. We can open the fatigue parameters. The axial stress range for the first end of this member will be checked based on the axial force in the biaxial bending moment. And the maximum threshold stress range is set to 7 KSI according to the specific connection detail used at the base. At the arm connection to the column, we will also specify the fatigue parameters. First, let's assign an offset of 10 inches at the first end of the arm member connected to the column. Note that the software does not automatically design this complex connection yet. Now, the member is shorter and we will be able to get the axial stress in the member in the welded end connection. Let's now assign the fatigue parameters for this connection. The axial stress range for the first end of the member will be checked based on the axial force in the biaxial bending moment. And, the maximum threshold stress range is set to 10 KSI according to the specific connection detail used here. Before we run the analysis, let's have a look at the load combinations. All combinations have been generated automatically with the Highway Sign Wizard. It includes all the required loads from the Ashto LTS as for the extreme loads, the service loads, and the fatigue loads. For example, the fatigue stress ranges are only verified for the fatigue combination type. The service loads are useful to verify the structure deflection criteria. You can do that by looking at the maximum joints displacement and then make sure it doesn't exceed the allowable deflection for your structure. Let's run the analysis and the design. Different types of analyses can be run such as linear or p-delta. Let's say we select P-delta to get a more accurate analysis result. For the design, we select Steel Verification. We'll now look at the structure's deformation. Let's select the internal deformation. If the displacement scale is too large, we can go ahead and change it to a more realistic scale. If we select 12 inches drawn as one foot, it will represent the true scale. So, now we will see the structure's true scale deformation. Let's now change the scale to something intermediate, so the displacement will be obvious without being too large. We can display the results for another combination. The first one corresponds to the factored self-weight only. Let's now look at the results for combination number two. This combination includes the wind along the z-axis, so we get a large displacement in the z-direction. Let's display the loads for that combination. We see it includes the self-weight and the wind in the z-direction. 
Now, we will look at the bending moments for that combination. We can see the biaxial bending moments in the pole as well as the arm. Let's also have a look at the axial forces in the structure. We can see that they are pretty small. To verify the maximum deflection criteria in the code, first, we will need to select the joints that correspond to your maximum criteria. It could be the tip of the column or the arm in this case. Then, you can select the joint displacement table. From the combination list, you can select the specific combination that fits the deflection verification. In this case, let's select only the combinations called Service 2. From the table, we can see that the maximum displacement at the top of the column is equal to 2.7 inches. This value can be compared to the allowable deflection. Let's now look at the steel design results. You can go ahead and check the option in the steel parts of the results bar. We are now looking at the worst limit states, including compression, tension, bending, combined stress, torsion, and warping. Results on the screen are only for combination number two. So, let's display the worst of all combinations. Combination number two was almost the critical one except at these two locations. These two critical positions, in fact, are due to the fatigue limit state. Let's confirm if this really was the case. We can display only the effect of the fatigue verification on the structure. So, now it's obvious that the fatigue was the controlling criteria for these two places. Let's do some additional verifications at the bottom of the pole. Let's say we look at the bending limit state. We'll look at the worst case including all combinations. Among the displayed information in this table, we can see the bending strength, the bending moments, and the ratio of limit states per combination. Keep in mind that the ratio of limit states should always be less than one to make sure the design is safe. We can always verify the fatigue limit state the same way for this member at the base. We can sort the table according to the fatigue limit state column. Then, we can see that the galloping induced vibration is the controlling load combination for this connection. The ratio is equal to 0.7 computed from the threshold stress range and the actual stress range. Let's have a look at an interesting feature that allows you to see the limit states along the main pole. Now, we see the limit states along the whole pole. The left corresponds to the bottom of the column, and as we move to the right, we see the variation of the limit state along the pole. At the top of the pole, the stresses are almost zero because there is almost no load at that point. We should also have a look at the anchorage rods. Here is all the anchorage rods data already filled. We can then look at the anchorage rods results. Let's sort the table according to the maximum ultimate limit state. Then, we can see that the galloping induced vibration is the controlling load combination for the anchor rods. So, this concludes our video of the traffic signal structure using the Ashto LRFD code. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Safi's YouTube channel and visit our website www.safi.com to stay updated on the latest features of the software.